Bruno Fernandes sparked a mass brawl last night. Manchester United welcomed FC Barcelona to Old Trafford for their second leg of their Europa League playoff game. And following the Red Devils 2-1 win, Barcelona can wave goodbye to European glory once again. And Dutch midfielder Frankie de Jong will be feeling sore this morning, as he was falling over, taking a vicious strike from Bruno Fernandes right in the stomach. Possibly even a little lower than the stomach, actually. A violent outburst from the Portuguese midfielder, which sparked a mass brawl. Aaron Wambasaka had brought the fleet-footed midfielder down as they were trying to break away. And as he was falling, laying stricken on the ground, Bruno thumped the ball away in frustration. But fortunately, or unfortunately, it cannoned straight into the former Ajax man, inevitably causing a mass confrontation from both sets of players. But calm was eventually restored. Barca had opened the scoring through Robert Lewandowski's penalty, before Fred equalised for the hosts, before Anthony popped up in the 73rd minute to score the winner for the hosts and inflict yet another early European exit for Barca once again. It's a magnificent night. Right? So I think it's it's brilliant win uh, when you can beat Barcelona, uh, eight points ahead in La Liga, ahead of Real Madrid. We have seen in this week Real Madrid playing. And I think then you, uh, yeah, you did a magnificent performance. Uh, and we are so really happy and we have to take, take it with us in the season take it with us in building extra belief uh, that we can win big games. Um, we, we have the potential to beat the big teams also. We have seen that we can beat City, we can beat Arsenal, we can beat Liverpool. Um, so uh, if we do the right things, if we follow rules, if we follow principles, if we show that discipline and we show the team spirit, I think uh, this team can achieve a lot. Nevertheless, Xavi expressed pride at his players' efforts. We have been much better than last season. We came up against Bayern, Inter and Man United this time. These are big, powerful sides, but we were not good enough. The Spanish tactician remains convinced that his side are making progress. We could have made it 2-0, but we didn't control the small details. This year we have competed against Bayern, against Inter. We have been better. We have competed in this tie. You have to be very self-critical and think about what needs to be improved. We may not be satisfied, but there has been an exponential change compared to last year. As for Gerard Piquet, he also had this to say, and he was slightly less analytical. Speaking on Twitch, he declared the situation a f mess. But elsewhere in Europe, there were nasty scenes during Sevilla's Europa League playoff game against PSV. Marco Dimitrovic, the Sevilla goalkeeper, was attacked by a rival fan. But fear not, the Serbian shot stopper decked his aggressor before the stewards rushed on and dealt with him. Speaking after the encounter, he said this, he pushed me from behind and then came and got in my face and tried to hit me. He grazed the side of my nose a little and then honestly, I wanted to hit him back, but it's never pretty. This shouldn't happen, and I hope they punish him and anyone else who assaults anyone on the pitch in the future. Elsewhere, Shakhtar Donetsk defeated Wren on penalties, a victory that manager Igor Jovicevic dedicated to Ukraine. It's very important. This match was for you, Ukraine. It's for our country, our Ukraine. Russia's invasion of its neighbour is now into its second year. I can't find the words at the moment. We were present until the end. You could almost say that we died on the pitch, that we left everything on there. This victory is a reward for our work. Respect to my players, I'm proud of them. The manager returned to the club six months ago with the club feeling the full effects of Russia's invasion. It's my dream that one day we can play at home in front of a full crowd. Having been forced out of Donetsk due to the conflict in Donbass, the club have exiled to Lviv. The club play their home European ties in Warsaw, which has allowed the players to see their families refuged in the city. These encounters allow us to see them again. They give us strength. As long as we qualify, we can see them. Without these European competitions, we couldn't go to Warsaw. Personally, if we'd been knocked out, I wouldn't have been able to see them until at least June. It's already a difficult situation with the constant bombing and sirens. We must think about tactics, but above all else, we want to wake up alive. The neutrals out there will be hoping their European adventure continues. So who do you think will win the Europa League and the Europa Conference League this season? Lionel Messi has taken a swipe at Vitinha during PSG training. Not usually one to lose his temper, La Polga was incensed by a heavy tackle by the Portuguese midfielder. French publication L'Equipe revealed that the Argentine skipper unceremoniously scolded his teammate. Now the diminutive midfielder has already fallen foul of Neymar 
Neymar during PSG's recent 3-0 loss away to Monaco, and also has felt the full wrath of Kylian Mbappe earlier this season when he failed to play him in on goal. It's been a tough time for him of late, infuriating his teammates and disappointing fans with his performances on the pitch. But let's hope there are brighter days to come. In other PSG-related news, Sergio Ramos has announced his international retirement. The Spanish star issued a lengthy statement on Twitter. The time has come. It's time for me to say goodbye to the Spain national team, to La Roja. This morning, I received a call from the current head coach who informed me that I am not and will not be part of his plans, regardless of how I perform or what I do in my career. With a heavy heart, it's the end of a road that I hoped would stretch out further and which would end with a better taste in my mouth on a par with all the success we achieved with La Roja. He then continued, I honestly believe that this journey deserved to end at my own choosing or because my performances were not at a level worthy of our national team, not due to a question of age or other reasons that, although I have not heard them directly, I have certainly felt. Because age in itself is not a virtue or a defect, it's just a number that is not necessarily related to performance or ability. The former Real Madrid man regrets having not had the opportunity to end his international career on his own terms. The defensive stalwart made his debut for La Roja back in 2005, making his tournament bow in 2006, scoring 23 times in 180 appearances, not bad for a defender, that makes him the most capped player in the history of the Spanish national team. The first trophy that he won with the side was the European Championships in 2008, and then followed that up by winning both the 2010 World Cup and Euro 2012. He missed Euro 2020 through injury and then was omitted from the squad for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Despite a rather anticlimactic end, he can definitely look back with pride on the achievements with his beloved national side. Elsewhere in Europe, referee Benoit Bastien had a shocker last night. The official was in charge of Fiorentina's Europa League game against Braga. Trailing 2-1 at half time, the Italian side thought that they had equalised just after the break. The referee's watch had indicated that Arthur Cabral's strike had gone in, but following a lengthy consultation with VAR, the goal was eventually ruled out as cameras couldn't truly ascertain whether or not the ball had crossed the line. Nevertheless, this debacle had no impact on this particular encounter. Having won the first leg 4-0, Fiorentina managed to secure a 3-2 win in the second leg to book their place in the last 16. That's all the news from us for today. We'll be back again tomorrow for more. In the meantime, take care and as always, football forever.